I would have had you on even if we didn't have Chris on last Friday. You understand that? I understand. He's smarter, better looking. I get it. Would you agree with that? Really? You don't just do you really believe that, Kyle? Self-deprecation is kind of my thing. So. <laughs> yeah, and plus, you know, unlike Erlacher, you're 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 one of us who is uh, follically challenged, Kyle. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I, I didn't get to cash in like Black did, but uh, you know, I think. God wanted us to shine, so Attaboy. shine we will. I like it, Kyle. I like that attitude. Do you feel that the bandwagon is full of folks jumping on the Bears bandwagon, Kyle? Because I certainly see it. I feel it. You know, you can always use uh, more and more fans, but I think the ones we've got are pretty awesome, and they've been steadfast in their belief in the Bears for at least the time that I've been here. Uh, I've been able to see firsthand. Well, then let then let me walk you through one by one the uh, the bandwagon storylines that I'm hearing right now. That uh, Trubisky uh, looks so much uh, more ready to go, and he looked ready to go coming out of the box last year. Uh, that he's going to have a tremendous season. Kyle, your thoughts on that? I think Mitch uh, has a tremendous support cast around him, in addition to his obvious talent. But I think the thing that separates him is his ability to interact with his teammates and rally the guys uh, around an idea and a belief and kind of an MO for this team. And, you know, we've been obsessed with getting better since we first got here uh, this spring, and Mitch has been the leader. Well, give me an example of that. How has he, how has he led in the manner in which you just described? Man, if, he, you know, if we're in the huddle, if a guy breaks the huddle before he finishes the play call, he's the first one to call him out. He's also the first one to hold himself accountable uh, and ask us to hold him accountable. He's still still a rookie until game four, so we still get to mess with him in that regard. <laughs> but uh, you see his tremendous work ethic, and obviously the football end of it takes care of itself. I mean, he's a good football player, and he'll be able to excel. But just the way he's, he is in the weight room, the way he is in meetings, uh, the way he conducts himself you know, in our free time, I think really sets the example and sets the bar high for the rest of the team. So how does he ask to be held accountable? Or how has he held himself accountable to you, Kyle? I mean, the little thing, you know, whether it's with, you know, his, if he doesn't feel his attitude is up to par or he doesn't feel his body language or his tempo, you know, we, we, we like to run from drill to drill. And, uh, you know, he'll even keep himself in check. Like if we – you know, if the fat guys can run past him, he's not hes not running hard enough. And, you know, little things like that are what hmm. lets us know he is a competitor through and through. And a guy like Brian Erlacher, who you guys spoke with, uh, he's another guy that wouldn't allow himself to get beat on the way to a drill, even something as small as that. Uh, you know, if you're a competitor, you want to compete all the time. Kyle Long here on the Rich Eisen Show. And the other storyline that we hear is to one of the reasons why the Bears are going to – uh, Excel uh, this year is based on, a, you know, it's a copycat league and you got a, a second year quarterback taken high atop the draft, getting hooked up with an offensive guru who's coming in in this first year in the NFL. And that happened with Sean McVay and Jared Goff last year. And that's going to happen with Matt Nagy and uh, Mitchell Trubisky. Uh, how has Matt Nagy's offense already looked to you, Kyle? I just think the way he goes about his business and, you know, he, he didn't want to overload us too much. And we've just been uh, trying to get the, the basics of football. in. you know, we want to make sure that our huddle is perfect. We want to make sure we're getting to the ball perfectly. Guys are lining up in the right spots. And, uh, you know, football is a game of inches, but it's also a game of very, very basic things, especially it starts up front with the offensive line. And uh, we have a new addition, Harry Heastan, the offensive line coach, who was previously here in Chicago. who did a great job in his time here. Um, he was at Notre Dame the last few years, and he's been great for our room. You know, we have the largest in terms of numbers, number of players on the field. We have the largest position group on the offense, and it starts with us, and we know that the other guys will follow suit. And so uh, how, how much different will the offense look from last year? I'd say we got, we got a lot of new personnel. Um, that's something that you guys will see, and it'll be exciting to see some of these playmakers uh, going out there and doing what they're supposed to do. Give me one. Allen Robinson, for instance. I mean, how's he looked? Yeah, Allen, Allen Robinson's a man. Uh, you know, I've been around some big, physical, freakish wide receivers in my career, and Allen Robinson's right up there with him. What about scheme-wise? Uh, scheme-wise looking different. Well, we don't talk scheme, so. Hmm. You just <laughs> Come you know, on, Rich. Why? I mean, you're just, is that telling tales out of school? I mean, soon we'll be able to operational put Operational security, probably. Uh, operational security. 
I like it. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.